All right, gang, I've been, uh, <clears throat> I've been running a little bit ragged. I've been moving along with this Volkswagen project, the uh, Miss Krista's Beetle, and I haven't had a, my old camera that I used for years finally crapped out on me and uh, went through ordering several, well, two, two new cameras, and I had to return both of those. They just weren't, uh, weren't cutting it. The, the video was really grainy. Uh, and the audio was okay, but uh, the video was terrible. So I've got a, um, I got another Sony actually, and uh, that seems to work for me. Uh, hopefully this one will hold out. Anyway, on the brakes, we're, I'm prepping all the brake parts for paint. I got some uh, um, red caliper paint. We're going to do obviously the surfaces of the rotors. I need to get all that degreased. I got it pretty much degreased, but I want to take some brake clean over it, blow it all off, get the lint off of it. Um, going to do the calipers as well in the red, plus the bracketry. All right, gang, I've got the everything ready to go here. I just want to make a note. I realize that this isn't the safest thing in the world to do, but uh, that is to use a socket to press a race in. I've got the races in the ice box. Just want to point this out. If you don't have a piece of pipe the right size, uh, the, for the races you're pressing in you can take some duct tape and put around your socket that way if it does shatter That you have something to keep the the shrapnel off of you. I've never had a socket shatter before I'm not recommending that you do that, but this is kind of a with this garage It's always been this way you use what you've got. That's what we do here We use what we've got to get the job done and uh, like I say, you know, I, know, I realize that there are people out there who say, oh gosh, that's unsafe and blah, blah, blah. Look, that's why the duct tape is on there. If it does shatter, you don't get a face full of that. Uh, not, I'm, not re no, I'm not even recommending that you do it. I'm just saying that's how I'm going to go about doing it. So, you know, it, it is what it is, you know. Uh, sometimes when you're doing your thing, you don't have multitudes of cash to to go out and buy whatever to do what you got to do with anyway i've got like i said i've got the um races in the ice box i'm going to get those out of there and we're going to start getting these races pressed into these um into these rotors all righty i've got the uh i've got the larger socket set up to go first so we're going to do the the inner races first i've cleaned everything up with uh as far as any kind of paint or anything clean the inside of the the rotor for that. I'm going to set our race in there. When you get those when you get those cool when you get those races cool like that, it contracts and it makes it go in just a little bit easier. All right, let's get this over to the press and we'll get this thing pressed on in there. All right, here we go. Get this scoot that over just a little bit. little off center. Just gonna push that push it back just a wee bit. The reason I've got this uh, appendage on that socket is to give that the plunger give the plunger on my press a little better place to sit all right there's one in easy as that just one more not to bore anybody but there are some folks out there are are new to this whole thing and it's very intimidating uh, to some and it, this channel has always been dedicated to those who uh, are new at it and need a little bit of a little bit of help along the way the idea with this is this these are beveled a little bit and it helps you to get that race started and you want to get that Start it in as square as you can. That's what I've done. I just tapped around on it. You don't want to whack on this thing. This is that's a very very uh, as far as hardness. That's a very hard piece of metal. So is that. 
and you can uh, you can send pieces of metal flying if you get too rough with it. I'm not going to jaw here for too long. That thing is warming up as we speak. I've got my other socket. I had all this ready beforehand. That's always helpful. Let's take this over and we'll press this in. All right. Get everything centered up. It helps if your if your press isn't totter uh, tottering like mine is, teetering and tottering. Let's get as close to center as you can get it. Okay. Really nothing to it. A lot of times stuff, you know, if it's the first time you've ever done something, it can be very intimidating. Um, and like I said, you know, that I've always tried with this channel. Not that I am an educator. That's not, I'm not trying to imply that. I like helping folks along. There are a lot of things, uh, you know, in my experience as a mechanic, there are a lot of things that have been intimidating me over the years the first time that I do them. And uh, we hope to remove a little of that intimidation where folks can actually enjoy mechanics. This, uh, this kit from AC Industries, is, I, I like them. I like them. It's, it's a really good kit. Um, they even go so far as on your axle nuts, they even label them right and left. Because, uh, well, if you don't know, on the, on the, on the driver's side, which you would call your left, it has a um, left-hand thread. On that, so it, it, not that you couldn't figure it out yourself, but it's, I mean, that's a pretty cool thing that they'd go and uh, uh, afford you that convenience to do that. So, anyway, right and left on those, don't get them mixed up that way. Uh, one last step that you've got to do. What I want to do now is uh, go ahead and uh, get the bearings greased. I'm going to go through the steps of, of um, how to load up a, a wheel bearing. Most of you know, some of you don't. So, we're, here we go. I get a palm full of wheel bearing grease and I put my finger in there and if you keep if you just keep working you'll eventually see that grease you can see it starting to peak right now I just keep packing that until I have it peeking all the way out of the top of that bearing now I turn it and do some more now your bigger garages are going to have a wheel bearing packer and if you do a lot of brake work I'd invest in one but I can't justify that expense myself no longer than it takes to do this anyway we're gonna keep going at it we're gonna do all the bearings and when that thing is completely you got grease peeking out all the way around you're done I walked those out where I had those in the um, where I had those races in the ice box, they got really frosty into the condensation. Um, I went in and wiped those out. We don't need moisture where it's not supposed to live. Anyway, I'm just going to keep after it. We'll do the rear ones and then we'll fire the camera back up and put the uh, put the seals in. Hope I'm getting everything in the camera shot here. Got. All the wheel bearings have been packed. Um, got your seals. I went in and cleaned the grease up around here. I want to get a good grip on this where it grips here on this flange. Not that it wouldn't. It's just um, what was that they say? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I think that's the way that goes. I'm just going to move my way around here and get this. in place very good all right let's drop our other bearing in this side I'm gonna follow suit sure good and clean here all right last see I'm probably Probably gonna just wrap this up here as part one of the uh, um, AC Industries 
disc brake conversion on Miss Chris's Beetle. And um, we'll pick up the second part of the install with the, the, the brackets and the calipers and, and uh, getting our brake lines installed. So, yeah, there we go.